So now we can actually uh, do ungrouping. So for example, here we've got daily, right, which is grouped by year, month, and day. Suppose for some reason you want to ungroup it. So you can do daily and then pipe it to this function ungroup, right? And then if you do summarize flights equals m, right? So now we are doing the summarization on the ungrouped data. So you're obviously going to get back the total for the entire data set. In other words, it's going to treat the whole data set as one group. And you sure enough see the same thing, 336,776, we know that number, that's what you get. Okay, so let's apply the uh, some of what we have learned to this. Okay, think of five different ways to assess the delay characteristics of a flight. Right? So for example, uh, this is not a programming question, this is just a general question to think about uh, variability in data. Right? So you may have flights, for example, which are uh, on the average 15 minutes early half the time, 15 minutes late half the time. Right? So suppose you're flying to a particular destination, you analyze it and you find that this is a characteristic. Right? So you could say that on the average, this flight is exactly on time. But you know, if you really try it, in fact, it's almost never going to be on time. It's either going to be early or it's going to be late. Right? On the other hand, you may have flights which are always 10 minutes late. Nothing else, right? So the average delay for these flights will actually be 10 minutes. So in, in average terms, these flights are worse than these flights, right? But you may prefer this because at least you know that if at all it's delayed, I'm restricted to a 10 minute delay as opposed to a possibility of a 15 minute delay. Okay. So it of course depends. So what we are saying is that uh, just going by the average alone, May not be enough you have to think about variability and that becomes very important right or you could have something which is even worse average is still completely on time average is going to be zero because 50 percent of the time it's 30 minutes early and 50 percent of the time it's 30 minutes late so the average is going to be zero but high variability right so again on average it's much better than this but in reality most of us may prefer this flights which are you know, guaranteed to be no more than 10 minutes late. Or you may have a flight which is 99% on time, but 1% of the time it's hugely delayed. So what we prefer really depends upon our needs, right? If you want to have certain guarantees so that you can plan, then you might take this one, which is, uh, you know, looks, in fact has the worst average performance of all the flights shown here, right? But, uh, but still may be the best in, in many senses. Whereas even this one leaves you with the risk that you could be two hours late, right? And if that is not acceptable, if you want more of a certainty, then you may go with this, right? Also, some people uh, may prefer flights that actually leave a little late, right? So that they have more time to get to the airport and so on, right? Then uh, they may prefer one, some of the other flights, right? So, uh, the point of this question is really to focus your attention on not just the average, but on variability, which becomes very important. Okay. Another question, which is more important, arrival delay or departure delay? Okay. So that also we have to think about because there are two kinds of delays. Uh, most of the time we'll think arrival delay is what is important because ultimately you get to the destination by the time. Uh, but for some people, departure delay may be more important because uh, you know they may just want to, to get there and get on the plane. Uh, so now here, come up with another approach that will give you the same output as this, right? So we are using the count function, which is obviously very easy. So we are saying not cancel is count, uh, take the not cancel flights and count the number of uh, different, uh, count for every destination, okay? Uh, count, you know, the destination for every, so what you're going to get is for every destination, the count of the number of flights, right? But you want to do that without using the count function. Okay, you want to count it, but without using the count function. Obviously, uh, the only other way you can do counting is in the summarize function, right? Because in summarize, you have the option of uh, n open parentheses close parentheses, which also does counting. So you could do it using the summarize function. So you take the not cancel, you group it by destination, and then summarize the count. Right? So clearly, when you want to do count. This is obviously much better because you don't have to do the grouping and the summarizing, you just say count. Okay. So when you're doing count, this is a nice option. 
another thing, you come up with another approach that will give you the same output as this weighted tail number, right? Weighted distance of the tail number. In other words, the total number of miles flown by each tail number. Okay. So once again, you know, any kind of counting that you are doing, obviously the answer is going to be summarized. So we can say group it by tail number and then summarize by adding the distance, sum of the distance. Okay. That will effectively give you the same answer. Uh, you can run it and then you can think a little bit about it and you will get the idea of what is going on. Okay. So this is again just a theoretical question. Our definition of cancel flights is, is NA departure delay or is NA arrival delay? Okay, that is slightly suboptimal, uh, right? That means that we are saying, uh, in fact, I think it was and, not all. Okay, so basically we are saying departure delay is NA and arrival delay is also NA, then we treat the flights as cancelled. Okay, it's slightly suboptimal in the sense that it's a complicated computation, right? You have to consider two fields and find the value. Is, it, uh, is there a better way to do this, right? Uh, uh, so there is a better way. If you analyze the data, you will see that uh, for all the flights for which there is a departure delay, they also have a right. Okay, the arrival delay is also there. Okay, so uh, so therefore it is enough if we look at just departure delay. Right. So if departure delay is NA, or if departure time is NA then you can say it's a cancelled flight. So you don't have need to have this complicated expression, right? So once again, if you look at the data, you'll find that this is what it is. So maybe departure time or departure delay would be the, would be better than doing this complicated operation. But of course, we showed this complicated operation just to introduce the Boolean operations, okay? So compute the number of cancelled flights per day. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We'll treat the cancel flights based on our definition, right? So we just want to find the number of flights that meet that condition. Okay, so we take flights and pipe it into, of course, group it by year, month, day because we are looking per day, right? So now we are going to either summarize uh, and basically we are saying, I'm treating if the departure time is NA, then it's a cancel flight, right? So we already know that that's a Boolean result, right? And I'm using both departure time and arrival time, both are NA, then it's a cancelled flight. Of course, we could use the more efficient version that we just discussed in the previous slide. No matter what, uh, this is going to be a Boolean value, true or false, and we just add it up. So that will tell us how many flights were cancelled, right? Because if you add a bunch of trues and, and falses, true is 1, false is 0, so you will get the total for which this is true. You will get the number of cases for which it's true. So you could do that. Okay, is the proportion of cancelled flights related to the average delay? Right, the question is being asked to say, uh, you know, this this is possibly likely, right? Because whenever there is lots of delays in the airline system, right, that is happening because of certain conditions. You know, maybe there is bad weather in some part, some huge chunks of the country. So many flights which left initially were all delayed. Right? And once people understand the weather is bad, they may start cancelling the flights. Right? So if you look every day and find the proportion of cancelled flights, that is number of cancelled flights divided by the total number of flights. Right? So you get one number and then you get the average delay for every day. Right? What the question that is being asked is, is there some sort of a relationship? So we can easily write the code to pop it, to find that out, to plot it. We can say flights uh, and then pipe it to group by, group it and summarize to find out uh, the number of cancelled flights, okay? And then proportion of flights cancelled is simply number of cancelled flights divided by the total number of flights. So we are using the n open parenthesis, close parenthesis function. And then we are computing the average delay as, uh, you know, mean arrival delay. We are treating the average delay as the arrival delay. And then we are piping all, so we have now got a table which has the proportion of cancelled flights and the average delay for every day. Okay, so now it's a simple matter to plot it using ggplot. So we say ggplot and plot the average delay on the x-axis, proportion cancelled on the y-axis, and show you know plot the points g on point, and also give me the smoke line so that we can see if there's a trend. 
If you do all of that, this is what you get. I could have used actually uh, alpha to get some transparency, to get an idea of how many there are. Okay, But you can see a trend. But as the average delay increases, there is also a proportion of cancellation also increases. It's, it's a fairly strong trend. Uh, you could do a linear regression and see if this is indeed true. Uh, I'm sure it will be true and it will be significant. Okay. Of course, there are some huge outliers here, right? but we don't know how many points they are. They could be just one flight or there could be many flights. Uh, so again, you could do further analy analysis. Right? So this is the whole process of exploratory analysis again. You see the result, you see the graph, and then you ask questions, oh, what's going on? What's going on with these things which are outside of the normal trend? And then you understand something more about your data. Okay. Which carrier has the worst race? Right? So now, of course, what you want to do is you want to group by the carrier and find the average delay for each carrier. Okay. So group it by carrier, then mean delay as Again, I'm treating delay as arrival delay. You could use departure delay if you want, but arrival delay is more uh, more indicative because that's the uh, you know that's at the end of the flight, right? So you can do that, and then what you want to do is you now have the delay for every carrier, right? But you want to find the worst delays, so you could do arrange it by descending mean delay. Right? So mean delay is what we call this variable. So arrange it by descending order, and you'll get result okay now there's a slightly better way to do when you want to find the worst or the best right so finding the worst members of each group okay so we're creating a data frame uh, earlier we created it the flights small right so again we group it by year month day but this time we are filtering it by rank descending order of arrival delay less than 10 right so descending order of arrival delay which means the maximum things will come first and we're saying Show me only the top 10, right? So we're filtering it by the rank less than 10. So what this will do, in the earlier example, we didn't filter it. We just said we created the whole thing, right? But if you want to see the top 10 values or the top 20 values, you can then do it by filtering on the rank, okay? So this way you'll get the top 10 the members, 10, 20, whatever number you want. Okay, if you want the absolute worst, you can say rank less than 2 or rank equal to 1 and you'll get the worst. Okay, So here we are doing uh, one more thing. That is, we want to find the flights uh, popular destinations. Right? That is, destinations to which there are lots of flights. And we define a popular destination in this example by destinations that have more than 365 flights in the whole year which basically means they've got more than one flight on the average. Okay, so we can, you can use N here also, right? So we've grouped it by destination and then we are filtering by N being the total number of flights for that particular group greater than 365. So that becomes popular destinations and this will just display the popular destinations. Okay, now we're taking the popular destinations and taking only those that have uh, you know, uh, arrival delay greater than zero, and then proportion of delays. We're computing the proportion of flights to those destinations which are delayed, arrival delay by some of the arrival delay. Okay, uh, so that will give us an idea, and then uh, we are selecting only year to day destination arrival delay and uh, proportion of delay. Okay, so you can do that also. So this way you can you're doing grouping as well as combining it with mutating. Okay. So I think uh, we've covered a lot of ground in the last two sessions with dplyr. Uh, but as you can see, these are very powerful functions with which you can manipulate uh, large amounts of data very conveniently. And uh, the syntax also, once you get used to it, is actually very user friendly. Okay. So uh, we'll end our discussion of uh, dplyr here. Then we'll move on to other topics starting from the next week.